Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Ooh, welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by SeatGeek. This is episode 422. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here again with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate! I'm back, baby. I'm back. How's it feel? Feels good. Feels good. Married feels, man. Feels it feels weird. Feels weird. Um, she's gonna get mad at me for telling this story. But when we were at the reception, because you know I I don't know if you remember like the first time you said like my wife is. And it was like this weird moment where we're hanging out having fun with everybody and um maid of honor was like tequila shots and we were like okay so tequila shots get thrown back and i look at her face and i could tell it's not sitting well immediately and so she like starts to wander a certain direction and i like tell her maid of honor i was like get her to the bathroom because that's going to come back up in a sec she goes okay okay runs runs and like grabs her runs her to the bathroom you know, I like wander off and go do something. And I, I think your in. hunch was right, by the way. The way this story is going, I don't know if she'd, she'd really like this, but continue. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> but uh, especially the first story, but whatever. Um, and I'm like going and talking with my parents. And they're like, you having a good night? Like, you, you doing good? And I was like, yeah, doing great. My wife's puking in the bathroom right now. And I was like, wait, my wife. My wife's puking and like we're doing like iPod. Let's go, yeah. my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time it uh, it came out. But yeah, man, feels good. Man. Um, you know the, re- the the relief of it, uh, kind of all just kind of coming together and being finalized and done. Crazy, crazy to do it. I, I mean, basically plan the whole thing in in two months. So, but yeah. Safe to, I could sleep for a week if I if I really I believe it. <laughs> but yeah, going it's good. Quite man. a whirlwind. I know. And I'll be gone. I'll be gone in two weeks again. As uh, as you know already, listeners, I apologize. But uh, this is your not last really. one. Right? I'm not that sorry. Yeah. Huh? You said you'll be gone in two weeks, but I thought you left the ninth. Nineteenth. Oh, you leave the 19th. Oh, yeah. it's the 19th to the 29th. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, I thought nine, it was the 9th through the 19th. Okay. So no. you'll be around for a little bit then. Yeah. The All next right. three. Okay. The next three. Yeah. That so works. Got me for that works. Works for me. Some time to get back to normalcy just for a sec. I'm sure the listeners appreciate it because I'm sure after two solo pods <laughs> with yours truly, they're probably just dying to have you'll find their a favorite guest. co host back. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Uh, <laughs> happy for you guys. Glad you're back. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Glad to have you. Glad to have you back on the pod. Uh, got a lot to talk about. Uh, right here off the top, though, uh, you had texted me the other day when all this Tommy John news started breaking, and you're like, "We're going in on this on the next pod, right?" And yeah. yeah, we're yeah we're going in on this because this is. I mean, I know it's not necessarily related, but it it just kind of puts things into perspective. I tweeted out, I think it was yesterday. I was like, we've had multiple announcements regarding season ending surgeries before the Red Sox have even played a home game yet. And yeah, I mean, that's that's a little alarming. Like, forget the the Red Sox side of it. The, just the fact that we've had these announcements already. And I've, I've seen the word epidemic thrown around. And I think that's very accurate. Like this, this is an issue that seemingly is not going away. But in the in the last handful of days, we've we've received news that Shane Bieber will have season ending TJ. Um, Yuri Perez will undergo season ending TJ. Jonathan Lewizica is uh, I think he's avoiding TJ, but will have season ending surgery to repair to repair the yeah. UCL. I don't know if that's like a Yeah, how do you repair that, the UCL and not categorize it as TJ? I don't know what that's is all. Is it about. one of those internal brace situations? I don't know. Oh yeah, I think I think he's opting for the internal brace. Hmm. 
um, route. But either way, and then on top of that, you've got Spencer Strider who... There's serious concerns. This, this is what we, I keep seeing. I don't want to necessarily speak it into it up. existence, but I think I think yeah. we're close. We're knocking yeah. on the door. I think we can chalk it up. And like you say all the time, it's it's one of these things where it, if this if this is the conclusion that they're reaching behind closed doors, why not just get it out of the way? Like why are yeah. we why are we waiting to make this kind of decision? I understand you want to explore all courses yeah. of, of action there, but you know, the, the forearm, the elbows, those are never good places to start when it comes to an injury The those never lead yeah. to good news. No, but the, I think the difference of like, like for the perfect example of saying like Garrett Cole going to get a second opinion, there wasn't like obvious structural damage at least they didn't come out and say that the Braves are coming out and saying that like there is cause for serious concern. We're getting a second opinion, but like, I don't know, man. Um, the only, the only name because like for us to sit here and say like, yeah, it's most likely going to end up in TJ. The only name I can genuinely come up with is when Tanaka opted out and went like a rehab route and was able to come back the same season and ended up being pretty good that, but that's like a one-off anomaly situation. I I think it's so unfortunate to say that like a lot of these power arms and like power pitchers, it's like we're just waiting for the first one to get out of the way. Like a TJ is inevitable eventually, which is sad. Um, uh, yeah, on that note, I, I do have a couple items of, of data here from USA Today. Uh, I was reading an article that they had released very, very recently in, in wake of uh, these uh, reports, but they said that there were more than 260 major league and minor league pitchers in 2021 who had elbow surgeries, an increase of more than 400% from 10 years ago. And then what in regards to what you were saying of it's almost a foregone conclusion that one, at least one is going to happen and you're just kind of waiting for that second hat to drop. It said USA Today said pitchers requiring a second Tommy John or elbow surgery uh, has now doubled. Yeah, dude. I can't. I, I still think I know the immediate question that everyone's going to, especially on Twitter, it's like, is it pitch clock? Is it pitch clock? I think it is a perfect storm of things. Um, Them taking away grip entirely for pitchers has to be it. And I keep it recycled today, and I'm so glad it did because it that, uh, that Glass Now interview that happened a few years ago, I think it was COVID. Um, didn't didn't he get hurt in COVID? And then, or was it 2022? He got hurt and then missed last year. I feel like it was 22. I think it was 22. He got hurt, but he he breaks down. It's a really good interview. If you haven't seen it, it's maybe two or three minutes long. But he really like breaks down of talking about what happens when a ball loses its tackiness and how it gets like he he describes it as like dusty like it's like dirt but it slides and so what he's doing is having to grip a fastball deeper in his hand having to grip a curveball he's he's like talks about choking it and what that does by gripping it harder is that you're going to get that pressure and that strength coming out of your forearm where he talks about like my pitching coach wants me to treat this thing like an egg now I can't because of this grit and he admits to being, hey, sunscreen and rosin was like my thing. And he's like, you best believe any of your favorite pitchers have been doing the same thing. So, again, this just goes back to like in the MLBPA coming out with that statement about like, you know, the MLB needs to crack down and stuff. But like you're the one that you're the one that's accepting these rule changes. Like you, that has to be a mutual agreement. You're saying yes to this like – both sides need to come together and come up with some type of legal substance 
Are you that you're referring allows... to the statements that came out? Yeah. 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 So I can I've got those uh queued up here for you. It was a quick um, one, right? It was only like a couple sentences. Yeah. From, so, from the players association anyway. Yeah. So uh what what MLB came out and said, or I, I think the statement was officially from Tony Clark, um, but he said the statement said, despite unanimous player opposition and significant concerns regarding health and safety, the commissioner's office reduced the length of the pitch clock last December, just one season removed from imposing the most significant rule changes or rule change in decades. Since then, our concerns about the health impacts of reduced recovery time have only intensified. The league's unwillingness thus far to acknowledge or study the effects of these profound change changes is an unprecedented threat to our game and its most valuable asset, the players. Very shortly after that, uh, the league came out and responded saying, this statement ignores the empirical evidence and much more significant long-term trend over multiple decades of velocity and spin increases that are highly correlated with arm injuries. Nobody wants to see pitchers get hurt in this game, which is why MLB is currently undergoing a significant comprehensive research study into the causes of this long-term increase, interviewing prominent medical experts across baseball, which to date have has been consistent with an independent analysis by Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins University that found no evidence to support that the introduction of the pitch clock has increased injuries. In fact, JHU found no evidence that pitchers who work quickly in 2023 were more likely to sustain an injury that those than those who worked less quickly on average. JHU also found no evidence that pitchers who sped up their pace were more likely to sustain an injury than those who did not. Yeah, see, and that's what I'm saying is that I think this is like a microcosm of the perfect storm, right? When you have, and I don't think anybody but a player can specifically come out and say like, hey, that time in between reps, I mean, think about any, like an average Joe going to the gym. You finish a set of bench press, shoulder press, tricep pull downs, whatever you're doing, you finish a set and like sometimes you need 45 seconds to a minute to get into that next set. And so for this type of action for a pitcher to do this over and over again, like there's it, you can't just say across the board that it doesn't affect anybody. You're talking about guys that pitch differently. You're talking about guys that, you know, but overall, I mean, our game is is obsessed with with velocity is obsessed with spin and Chris Bassett came out and said it before in, in spring training. He did an interview saying, like, we need to get back to pitching. We need to get back to our game being OK with 92, 93. And spotting up. And those guys getting a chance, because, I mean, how many minor leaguers fizzle out because they don't crack into the 96, 97 range? You know what I mean? How many guys get overlooked because they can't? We're so, so, so obsessed with it. John Smoltz is quoted saying, like, I only geared up maybe four or five times during an outing where I'm going 100%. The rest of the game has to be 90%, 80%, like, whatever it is to get through. And so, like, when we talk about our game, like, changing so much, it's it's just a perfect storm. I'm not going to sit here and solely blame it on pitch clock. But I'm not going to say pitch clock is completely innocent in this conversation. Yeah, I I mean, I know we've both shared our thoughts on the pitch clock, especially shortly thereafter uh, the news was introduced that that was going to become a thing in, in Major League Baseball. And I know us and a lot of other people jumped on that and and rightfully so. Like it certainly introduced some some issues to the game that weren't there before although it did you know it's it's alleviated some other things um but it's it's important i think for us as baseball fans to step back and realize like we can't just make the pitch clock the boogeyman like this is a much more complex issue 100 um and that to your like you were saying i think it's i think it's a perfect storm i think the this infatuation with velocity right has has um, only continued this trend of of throwing instead of pitching, and you know you you open up 
you open up social media and you see drills of these high schoolers and college players doing just the most asinine things where you're Dude. like, there's no way. You remember when we were kids, like weighted balls were like scary. Like, don't touch those. Like, don't do that too often. Don't do. And now you're just seeing kids long tossing. Long toss with weighted balls. I'm what? Like, <laughs> That's not. The human body is not designed to no. do that. No. It's just not. And and kind of going off of that, there was a there's a tweet from our our friend, friend of the show, Dallas Braden. He put out a tweet that I think made great sense um, on that very issue. He said, we are bigger, faster, stronger than we've ever been as humans. We have tech to aid in creating the most efficient movement patterns that generate maximum velocity. I believe we have hit our evolutionary cap as far as the force mm. the human body can tolerate in regard to the torque we're able to create. We know how to build the, this. Is, I love this. He said, we know how to build the engines, but it feels like the frame just can't handle the horsepower. There's a lot more nuance to this aside from, quote, guys just throw too hard. Yeah. That's I don't think you can put it any mo- better than that. Like the most perfectly worded summarization I've ever heard. We we have I I I think I have to agree with them. We we I think yeah. we've we've maxed out, we've capped out on what we can do velocity wise. I right. just I I don't see us like going any further with this. Right. And I think you're seeing it in the shape in the form of these injuries. Like we the, the human right. body just cannot keep up. I agree. I agree. I don't know, man. Like, I think there are certain ways, like you remember how we were so nervous about the pitch clock when it first came out and it was on every score bug, right? Every, all the time it was popping up. Now it's like a lot of score bugs don't even have it on there. Like there is like, I I know I watch some games. You don't even see a pitch clock until there's possibly a violation. Maybe we get rid of the radar gun. Maybe, maybe we just stop showing it so much. You know, maybe it's an in, in, in stadium type thing. But the, uh, the obsession is, is scary at this point. It, it really is. Uh, it very, it quite literally is an obsession. Like I said, you, yeah. you open up social media, you see these guys, they're, you know, it, it's a group of teammates from a, a given high school or college team. And they're all huddled up in some sort of indoor facility. They've got the nets dropped down and they are going just full send into the nets. Yeah. No, with no concern for accuracy or um, mechanics. It's just right. what's the highest number we can hit on that radar gun. It's and celebrating, it's, celebrating. Yeah. Like cracking 90 at 13 years old. Like it's just insane. Of What are we doing? Yeah, I agree. Um, I did find myself going down a little bit of a rabbit hole on Twitter. There's some guy that's like, he's been doing it for a while, probably a year plus talking about this. It's a delivery issue. And he's like freeze framing these pictures of, of pictures that are like at here, like glove side, but they're flat here. And then they'll have like a picture of like Nolan Ryan and he's up. And he's like, he's talking about how like anywhere in this range is fine. You're 90 degrees up with the arm all the way down to maybe 45 when you start getting flat. And he's like predicting injuries before they're happening. He's like, this guy's eventually going to have this. And it's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I, it, it does go into the account that like what Dallas was saying about like, we have these sensors, like you have guys putting on sensors all over their body in the off season, figuring out how to posture themselves mechanically to put as much possible torque that, as th- that they can to create that velocity. And it's like, our, our bodies aren't made for this, man. Our bodies are not made for this. And, and look, I, I, I want, I, I want this to be heard. I'm not, I'm not knocking the innovation. Like the, the whole I think the there's a lot max, of good that's come out of it. Sure. And like the max effort into the nets, I, I've i seen that. I, I've had enough of that. I'm, I'm, I'm out on that mm-hmm. and, and things like that. But 
you know, with these, sen- a lot of the things that we didn't have growing up playing ball, it's like, I'm not going to, just because I don't understand it doesn't mean I'm going to, I'm going to knock it. I, I understand that there's, there's a, a major wave in terms of uh, development, understanding just how the body works and, and how that relates to performance on the diamond. But I think we need to, s- I mean, dare I say, slow it down, let this research catch up a little bit and say, or, or and realize rather, oh, maybe this quest of throwing 115 maybe is not a worth worthwhile endeavor <laughs> yeah. because we're seeing through this data, th- through this, th- these tests that the human body just can't do it. Yeah. And it, I think we're, I, I think the, the innovation is outpacing the data. To put it simply, like I, I, yeah. I, I think that it's going to take, I, I don't know how many injuries, how many more injuries like this is going to take, how many more reports of guys having multiple TJs. I think for, we're going to see a ton of like, band-aids. I think we're going to see a ton of band-aids over the next few years and it's potentially some type of change to the mound, um, a normalization of a six, seven man rotation. Like it, it is this it's again, it's just this perfect storm of all these things. These guys not getting built up and, and ramped up properly in minor league systems because they're trying to save bullets, right? Like it, it's this, it's this recovery time where you have guys like reporting back quicker. You have some guys that don't know when to take time off. Like I it's, it's tough, man. There's going to be band-aids. There's going to be random things that they're going to try and do. Um, I, I bet they change the criteria for a win, making the win more relevant. Maybe we drop it down to four innings instead of, you know, it's like, I, I just not, it's not, it's not like it's going to solve things in my mind. I think we need to get back to like, it sounds kind of old man and grumpy, but like, we got to get back to the pitchers we grew up watching and guys that are throwing upper eighties and low nineties, but like can place wherever they want and then gear it up to 95 every once in a while. Like that's got to become more of a, an acceptable thing by organizations. Yeah. By that's teams, where it starts. It starts from the top. Yeah. yeah. Like they have to be okay with that stuff. If you can get out, I don't care. That has to be more of the mentality. No, I mean, and I agree with you and, on that, I, I don't have the number pulled up, but in that article that I was reading, or one of the articles I was reading, it talked about the money that these teams are spending on the, you know, the side effects, the the collateral damage of, of yeah. these injuries, and it's a lot, man. I think it's like up in the, it's like in the billions, like the the tests you gotta you gotta have run the the contracts that like the guaranteed contracts that you gotta you gotta fork out for guys that are you know just riding the pine rehabbing whatever it is yeah um but to to what you were saying i agree with you i think it needs to become more acceptable more widely accepted but i i at least right now i have a hard time seeing that I, yeah. because it's not it's not sexy what's sexy is is real or or continuing that pursuit that I was talking about of, of we we've hit the one Oh three, one Oh four mark. Now, yeah. now let's get to one Oh, or let's get to one ten. Yeah. How can we get to one ten? Once you get to one ten, if that's even possible, how do we get to one fifteen? Like it's, it's just going to be this never ending pursuit. And I, I think like with anything too much of anything, uh, too much of a good thing becomes a bad thing. Yeah. And I think this pursuit of, um, increased velocity, it's gonna it's gonna flip the game on its head, and I just have a hard time seeing players, especially at the younger level, um, and even uh, at the major league level, putting putting the brakes on and saying we have we have to stop. Like this is this is getting too much because you know there's you could go you could go into the the weeds on it, but at the end of the day. Pro- pretty safe to to assume that velocity equals dollars for a team because yeah. the velocity means that that pitcher is going to have a little bit more of an edge, uh, assuming they can they can spot, um, and that means they're going to provide a little bit more output, and that's going to be more dollars in the pockets of these teams. Yeah. So 
I, I just have a hard time seeing these teams getting together and be like, you know, we gotta we gotta dial it back. Yeah. Unt- until we get to the point where they're losing entire rotations over the course of a year. Yeah. Because otherwise I, I just don't see how we stop it. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I would say if there's any any dads or coaches out there for for youth that are listening, I, I do think it's try to subdue that obsession in some way. And and there's no reason a 12 year old should be worrying about a radar gun. You know what I mean? This is something that's it's been shoved in kids faces and they're obsessed with it, you know, way, way, way too soon. Mm. There's something about like, there's a reason why our game is what it is. There's something about certain old school things that, that you can't really necessarily change it, you know? But there, there's Band-Aids coming. That's kind of my that's my thought process. There's going to be little things that they're going to try and do. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, do I got a question for you. Switching gears here. Uh, do you by chance have plans on... Uh, I got to pull up the date here. Uh-oh. Do you by chance have plans on September 26th? It's my stepmom's birthday. Outside of that, I got nothing. Are we trying to catch the last ever game at the Oakland Coliseum for the <laughs> Oakland days? <laughs> Are we trying to make a trip oh, to Oakland? Man. I wouldn't hate it, but I might hate it. I mean, what a... What a story, man. It became official, I believe, uh, what was it Friday? Thursday, Friday, somewhere in there. It was announced that the A's will, in fact, leave Oakland after this season uh, and will play, I believe it's three years in Sacramento with an option for a fourth, which would be 2028, based on where the... Las Vegas plans are at. If at that point they're still even on the table, who who knows, man? This like this is. I mean, can we call this a risk on on behalf of Oakland? Like you're 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 getting out of Dodge, but I don't know if this Vegas thing is as certain as they're trying to make it out to be. I hate it. I hate all of this. I'm so done. I'm so over it dissolve this franchise i don't care i it sucks because it's like it's such an it's a long lasting how long have they been around 80 90 years i mean they've been around a long time 56 in the east bay but overall like the philly a's you can go back to just sure the overall sure. athletics organization i oh man it sucks. I mean, I, I do. I am at that point where I, I do kind of feel bad for the fans in some ways, but I'm over it. Like, I'm just, I'm over it. Like, you, the owner does suck, but like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, there's no, there's no perfect fix to this. This is weird. The, the press conference where the owner's talking about, like, can't wait to see other guys hitting home runs out of there. It's like, it's just, so yeah, I can't strange. wait to see stars like Aaron Judge <laughs> putting balls. 450 feet into the bleachers. I've never seen someone that's so tone deaf. It's crazy. Dude, I can I can I give you a quick rundown? So I was, you know, I, I'm I'm reading a lot of articles. And so Good for you. I, I I read another article about this whole Oakland A situation. And this was news to me. I hadn't realized that for some reason this wasn't talked about more when it happened. I'm sure it was making its rounds in the Oakland circles, but it didn't make its way. Uh, to my feed until I I was reading this article, but apparently with this with this whole presser thing, mm-hmm. let me just read you the the uh, minute by minute breakdown here. It said, "Team President Dave Caval called Oakland Chief of Staff Lee Le- 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 Hansen at seven thirty six a.m. to inform her of the team's decision." Owner John Fisher followed five minutes later with a call to Oakland Mayor. Shang Thao and the team announced its move on social media 10 minutes after that. Within two hours of the announcement, the team held an outdoor news conference in the rain and wind at Sutter Health Park. 
Fisher spoke for one minute and 45 seconds and left the ballpark quickly afterward, taking no questions. I don't think I realized how much of a dumpster fire that that day was. Wow. How many total minutes was all of that? Total that up for me. Because, I mean, that's fast. Well, I don't I don't know what time the okay or yeah so press conference I'm assuming it was a couple hours later. It said within two hours of the announcement the team held the outdoor news conference. So if this we're is talking, a, this is not even three hours worth of stuff. Like you could play, you could it have, really isn't. Yeah, <laughs> I think it, sooner I, than a I, ball game would finish. I think it's yeah sooner than a ball game in in wow. the year 2024. We're making the official announcement, and ownership is out the door. In Dude, under three hours. Man, I did um I did see somewhere on Twitter that I think no like um Coliseum staff knew they found out through Twitter, like through this. Which is like, another which is like, another thing. Scary. Caval said he conducted an all staff Zoom meeting after the announcement in which he informed team employees that there will be significant layoffs as a result of this decision. He chose not to say what percentage of the workforce would be reduced, saying it has yet to be decided, but said that employees will be let go at the conclusion of the season. This guy's such a scumbag. I don't understand how MLB hasn't stepped in. Not everything has to be unanimous. You know what I mean? Like these owners, there's got to be like a majority vote to be like, this guy is not good for our game at this point. I... I, well, honestly, what I what I think, and I I know about as much as the average baseball, the non Oakland A fan right. does. My guess is that this whole deal has gone a lot more south than I think these higher ups and these owners and executives around the league would have hoped. Yeah, including Oakland A, including the Oakland A's front office. But I think that this is quickly turning into and has been for some time uh, just to hold your nose until it's over situation. Because this whole not taking questions, not having right. replies turned on, on on Twitter for the team account, it's just very like, all right, let's just get through this. Let's rip the bandaid off as quickly as we can, even though this bandaid is taking the lowest possible forever yeah. to come off. Every hair has been pulled with this. Unbelievable. It's super, super unfair. I think just like it is getting to this point where like the rest of baseball's, you know, tapping into this. It's, and that's where I do kind of feel bad for the A's because, like, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing in multitude of ways, like, for just baseball fans in general. Like, this is not okay. It's not good. Like, there's I'm, enough issues going on. This is, like, one of the worst. Yeah, this was very much self-inflicted. On yeah. behalf of the A's, like you didn't have to, you didn't have to handle it this way. The, it it very much seemed like they were trying to just steamroll their way into Vegas. They were, they weren't going to hear the ownership was yeah. not going to hear out uh, any sort of reason from from their whatever whoever's in their inner circle. It just seemed like the the individuals involved in the ultimate decision pro- making process had it set in their minds what they wanted to do and they were going to do what they could to accomplish that at whatever cost. Here's, I think where I'm struggling the most is like, how does the move, how does, how does it even get to a vote without the okay from the city? How do how does it even get to the point of owners voting on it? Unless, unless Vegas is like, Okay, green light. And, and that's what I'm saying. The process Th- that's is why, weird. That's why I don't think this Vegas thing is is as certain as they're trying to give off the impression that it is because we and we've already talked about it at length. Like you said, we're we're kind of over it at this point for how yeah. much we've talked about it. But Ve- the what was it? The mayor of Vegas literally was like, Yeah, figure out a way to make it work in Oakland because we're good here. Right. 
And you're seeing all of these head, these article headlines. Yeah. O- the Oakland A's are moving to Sacramento before their Vegas move. And I'm like, what Vegas move? Yeah. No, we're not we're not guaranteed a Vegas move at this there's point. There's a reason let's just say there's a reason there's an option for a fourth year. It doesn't take four years to build a stadium. It takes four years to potentially get this approval pushed through and the agreement to go and start breaking ground. Oh, this is gross. You might as well go where to a city that wants you. There's plenty of cities that would happily take you. I don't understand I don't, the force I don't feeding think so. into Vegas. I don't think so. I think there are plenty of cities that would happily accept an they expansion want a team. team. Yeah. But they would yeah. not. I don't think any team has taken this on because you have to think and not. It's it's kind of a weird comparison, but bear with me. It's kind of like the Bauer thing where it's like. Like, yeah, it, it might be nice to some degree, but like you have to you bring that that flack with you. Stank. And I think, I think a city is going to look at that and be like, I, I don't know if I'm yeah. really into having all that press tagging along. I don't know, man. I think I, I just, I wonder if like, maybe if, if Vegas doesn't eventually get pushed through and will be steps in. I mean, wasn't, didn't MLB step in for the Dodgers? Where I don't remember the names offhand. They were a married couple and they were going through a divorce. And they were the owners. And MLB stepped in and was like, we're running the show now. You guys are done. Um, and it was only for a year or two. And then I think that's when Magic Johnson and, and crew came in and purchased. Um, it was right before then. There's got to be some like some type of clause or stipulation where it's like, you're running this organization into the ground and you're just burning bridges everywhere while you're doing yeah, but, it. Yeah, but but the question is is who's going to do that? Because we know it's we know very well it's not going to be Rob Manford to step up and, and do that. He's because he, he's done in 27, right? Uh was it 5 years from now, I think he said? Oh, so 28, okay, or 29. That sounds right. Yeah. Is it 5 years from now from his announcement? I think it yeah. I think it was five from so twenty nine winner. Yeah, because that does make sense. Like we're gonna the next CBA is in twenty seven. So I think get past that, add in your expansion teams, you know, do your victory lap and then retire. I mean, and we'll touch on it here towards the end. But look at this whole not to not to rehash this necessarily, but look at how he's handling this whole fanatics thing. Radio silence. Yeah. And that affects the whole league. And to some degree, yeah, this A's thing affects the league, the, the entire league in, in some way, shape, or form. But, I mean, he's he's not really stepping up and saying much on that. So, I don't yeah. I don't see why why he would step in and, and go, yeah, we really need to clean this. I, I'm with you. I think Major League Baseball does need to step in and be like, okay, the, you guys have had more than yeah. enough chances to to figure out a better way and you haven't found it so we're taking over but i just i don't i don't know who that would be and i don't think anybody's going over rob manford's head to do that i'm gonna start a coup i'm gonna plan a coup well i was reading today and it sounds like Theo Epstein is moving further and further away from the idea of being the next commissioner i think it sounds like he's made it very clear that he has no interest in doing that so yeah that hope is lost but who knows maybe the league spirals downwards so much that he has to answer the bat call and come save us all that'd be cool i'm over it i what do you what are your thoughts on them kind of taking a Washington football team approach with their name just just the strangest approach and we're we're going by the A's for the next three to four years. Yeah. No Oakland, just the A's. I I think it's even sh- more strange that uh that leaked faculty note if you will the I talked memo about that. that they had I, I talked about that on on the solo yeah. pod last week that was yeah 
specifically like that removing was, anything that says rooted in Oakland. Yeah, dude. It, it's such a mess over there. It but is. You, I can't like you just can't be upset with anybody that's attached to the organization from like an employee standpoint. Like this is all this is because mm-hmm. they're they're flying along the same way the rest of us are. They're they're yeah. finding things out on social media. They're getting yeah. invites to Zoom calls where they're being told these things. They're it's not. It's nobody's, it's not concession stand workers fault. It's not the, the stadium security's fault. They're finding out these things the same way we are. And it, the, the blame solely falls in the lap of, of Fisher and company. Goon. He's a goon. What a mess. Curious to see what the away Jersey looks like. If they ever get jerseys. Are they a part of the group that's not getting jerseys? Oh, that's a, I, I wish we could transition into actually you know, <laughs> let, let's transition into that. I had it originally in closing the book, but I, I feel like it, we may go on a little bit more. Um, fanatics. Uh, I, I don't believe the A's are in the mix if, mm, to answer your question. They I, might I don't be if think, they're, if they're given to get new ones. That's true. Uh, but the, the latest update, I, last episode, I was talking about how, the it was the Mariners were waiting on their cream jerseys and the oh man who was it there's another team uh the Cardinals they're waiting on their their victory blue jerseys like the the baby blue the powder blue oh boy the unis Hadn't got those. They, I don't know if you saw saw my post that I put out. They're not getting those until most likely June. What? The Cardinals. Yeah, the Cardinals. Not Most likely not getting those until June. The Mariners, I believe, are expected or hopeful that they get those by, uh, I think, at some point this month. Not nearly as long as June, but sometime soon. Dude. But the latest update that I, I wanted to include in today's episode to talk about is now the Rangers and the Brewers are waiting on their city connects. Um, both of which I believe were for Friday home games, uh, but neither team has those available. So they are out of luck in that regard. Uh, and we're, we're just learning more that these teams are um, without, without uniforms. Did we ever get like an official reasoning as to why one of the largest sports apparel companies the world has ever known can't manufacture their own jerseys and why they have outsourced to fanatics? Do we ever get a, an official reasoning for that? Uh, according to reports, and I put this in the post, uh, fanatics cannot ship the jerseys until they get them in stock. And then pretty much every comment on the post was, uh, my brother, you manufacture the jerseys. I don't know, dude. It makes, Why it makes Nike no sense. Why is not making them? They make everything. They, they make everything. Here's my theory. I was talking about this last night with a group of friends, actually. My theory, no idea if this is right. Once sponsorship patches started coming on, who owns Wait, Fanatics? Sorry. Hold on. Can I pause here? Because I know I'm gonna yeah. forget this. Hold hold that thought. Put a pin no. in that. Did you see the did you see the thing floating around from Yankee Stadium? Yeah, where you can like get a custom jersey you and can add it add, to it. Add the sponsorship patch onto the jersey. Yeah. Who's doing it? To, and you're paying fifteen dollars to do it. <laughs> yeah, who's about, doing that? How about save fifteen dollars with the sponsorship patch? Common on there? sense would say if I'm gonna yeah. if I'm gonna wear a sponsorship patch, yeah. that I would be able to take money off of my jersey right. in exchange for the sponsorship. Here's my theory: Who owns Fanatics? Does MOB own Fanatics? No, I think no. Fanatics owns. Well, they own Majestic. That's something that's a little foggy for people because people are like, go back to Majestic. And it's like, well, Majestic I, is owned by Fanatics now. I think just 
buying them and absorbing them is one thing. Fanatics is, I'm assuming, dissolved Majestic. But when you buy something yeah, off of MLB.com, yeah. is that not Fanatics? Yeah, like if you go to the, if you go to like, ML, I'll do it right now. You go to MLB.com slash shop. The website oh, looks exactly like Fanatics, right? That's, that Don't do that. That's not a real website. It says, oof, we dropped the ball. You would think MLB.com slash shop would be a website. Seems but pretty. It's, I believe it's MLB shop. Dot com. Dot com. That's Fanatics, no? With MLB yeah, logos it, it in place? It literally says MLB shop at the top, a Fanatics experience. Okay. Here's my theory. Once the sponsorship patches got the green light, I believe that if Nike, because Nike's just throwing the logo on there, right? Nike's given Fanatics the rights to put that logo on there. Well, getting paid to put that logo on there. That's my understanding. My theory is that once the sponsorship patches started coming into play, Nike could no longer produce the jersey because they would have to get a cut for, from those sponsors. Like if, what is it, ADT? Who are they with? Padres? No, that's Motorola. No, that's ADT Motorola. is the Marlins. Let's say, let's say Motorola is Why like, all right, this? I want to throw, I know it's embarrassing. I want to throw that patch on your jersey. Nike is going to have to get a cut of that if they're manufacturing those jerseys. So I think this transition of power to make fanatics make the jersey, slap a Nike logo on there. Nike gets paid for that. But now the sponsorship stuff goes right to MLB because the jersey is being produced by MLB under the umbrella of fanatics. Does that make sense? Am I going too far on the tinfoil hat here or does it seem kind of logical? Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense, but there is a lot of like fuzziness because I keep seeing people like, I mean, I don't want to call them like bootlickers, but they're like coming into the fence of fanatics and they'll be like, it's not fanatics problem. It's Nike's problem. Nike, my understanding is that Nike is the designer of the right. uniforms and they're f- manufactured by fanatics. And I, and by man, and by fanatics being, I'm assuming owned by MLB, those sponsorship patches mean that 100% of that money is going to MLB and or MLB organization like Padres, right? But if you are, if Nike is still making the jerseys, I think they have to be getting a cut of that sponsorship deal. I think that's why we've seen everything transition away from Nike. Because there's no way Nike can't do that. There's no way Nike can't create jerseys. They do it for every other league. You're telling me Fanatics is making football jerseys? They're making NFL jerseys for Nike? I doubt it. But they don't have sponsorship patches on there. We do. Kind of makes sense, right? It's my guessing. <sighs> it's it's my guess. I mean, you're my guess is as good as yours, and vice versa. There's I I just don't I don't know, man. It this is such I said it on the last episode. How this relationship wasn't severed months ago. Yeah. Is beyond me. And I know, I know we we rag on the on made on uh the front offices of Major League Baseball and Manfred and, and all that. But like it, I understand our expectations for them are low. But come on. Like have some sort of self-respect for not only yourselves, but the league that you run yeah. and go no no more of this. This is this is embarrassing commissioners I mean, need state of the unions the same way presidents do it, it's it's the laughing stock of sports right now like the fact that we can't even get our jersey thing figured out and i'm seeing a lot you want you want to talk about tinfoil hat situations i'm seeing a lot of commentary talking about how i don't remember the order of it but it was basically like the what, what was it? What's it? Isn't there like another? Oh, that apparently like the Shohei thing was supposed to be a cover up for the Fanatics jerseys. And then apparently this TJ epidemic was supposed to be a cover up for the Shohei thing. 
and just That's this a lot long, of tin. this long line of of Ooh. conspiracies and cover ups from Major League Baseball. But it, ultimately, regardless if you believe any of that or not, the end at the end of the day, none of that is good for baseball. I understand the 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 press of it and the attention that comes with it. I guess is good for baseball, but none of those things are good. Like, yeah, those are inherently bad things. And you're just yeah. drawing that much more negative attention to yourself and the league. It's embarrassing, man. Like, this is an absolute joke. Major League Baseball franchises don't have uniforms to wear. And the teams that do have the uniforms to wear, they're garbage. This is like JV high school type stuff, man. It's unbelievable. People were literally commenting on these posts about the Fanatics issues that I was, I was posting about. They're like... Yeah, I had the same problem for my 12U baseball team. <laughs> uh, it's like, how are they, How are these things not in stock? What does that even mean? You make the jerseys, my brother. I don't get that. I really don't get that. Oh. Man. Oh, all right. Enough of that. They what? purchased tops a couple years ago, didn't they? Oh my god, dude! So, I don't like, even want to <laughs> open that can of worms. Those people, this you is... know, baseball card collectors—they are serious and they hate their lives right now, yeah. dude. Fanatics has ruined yeah. the hobby, ruined it. What a train wreck! Clown Michael Manfred's Rubin just... needs to just take this money that he is just gouging. And just go retire and Call hand quits, the reins man. to Fanatics over to somebody else. And then Fanatics needs to hand the reins over collectively to somebody else for Major League Baseball. Because yeah. they also have the NHL, too. I don't know if you saw that. That's coming next year. Oh, boy. And NHL fans are bracing themselves for that. And they're they're getting a little taste of, of what's coming their way right now with baseball. Talk about a fan base that loves their jerseys. Hockey fans <laughs> love their jerseys. You're telling me, man, that they are in for a rude awakening. Um, one one uh, other thing here. This is where we originally were going to go after the uh, after our last topic. I was going to bring up the City Connects for the Phillies. Those released, uh, I believe, Friday, the end of last week Some at some point. Um, not sure if you saw, but they were, in fact, the jerseys that were leaked uh, leaks yeah. last year year i guess was a it a was it that long ago uh the off season i I, yeah. I would venture to say um but you know i don't i don't really know how i feel about them i i do have to say uh and i'll i'll give him credit liam uh liam fantasy on twitter he says we have to stop trying to make dark baseball pants happen it will never work thank and you couldn't agree more. It's Thank just, you. it's not a good look. It's, it's not. I don't know why we're trying to force this on baseball. It's not, it's just not our thing. And yeah, that's not an old man take. It's just, how, how can you look at home whites, at least for pants and be like, yeah, no, those, those aren't it. Let's go, let's go black. No. There's one, one single uniform that works with black pants. In San Diego State. That's it. That's it. It's the only I one that's guess, allowed to do yeah. it. And even then, I'm like, I'm not even a then. fan personally. Yeah. I've never liked dark pants. I've never been okay with the look. I I specifically these Philly jerseys. Um props on the video. I think the Phillies dropped a pretty cool video, like bringing they did. in that was excellent. You know, people from from Philly and and the whole like, you know, the blue collar thing. It's great. And like, I, I think you and I have have bought in to like. I know people talk a lot of noise against Philly fans, but like overall, I don't know if there's a better sports city out there. I really I can't think of any other sports city who is just that bought in and that connected. Um. I just don't like the look. I I don't get the look. I don't I don't understand the the 
this it seems like the, the, it's just a stretch every jersey that comes out it's such a stretch they to it's connect re- dots that don't yeah make sense. it's reverse engineer like they'll just make it and then they'll they'll walk it back and like all right how can like how can we make sense of this part yeah. of the jersey so for those wondering uh i'm looking at the infographic that the phillies release um the pictures of bryson stott you can pull it up if you're interested it says there's a line that's pointing to the collar. It says a collar that's notice or notably blue um, in reference to their blue, blue collar nature as a city. Um, it says the script on the Jersey is that's really tiny text. I, I should zoom in, but I can't. Um, there we go. 125% Google Docs. <laughs> it says our script is reminiscent of our country country's founding documents that features a pattern symbolizing the crack of the liberty bell i mean i'm i'm cool with that i i do i will say i like the script it's it's really just the pants uh the colors say colors a city can rally behind blue and yellow are based on our city's flag unchanged since its inception the light to dark sh- this was the i can understand the blue and yellow this was the part that made no sense to me says the light to dark shift celebrates our spirit of revolution, a city unafraid Stop. to rise up and fight. What does that even mean? Stop. Come on. A city unafraid to rise up and fight. So we're going to give you black pants. Okay. That, that makes sense, I guess. Sure. Well, we'll just roll with that. And then they got the sleeve patch. It says city of brotherly love with the iconic Liberty Bell. A nod to the notable love sculpture. Look sculpture located in the heart of our city not okay so not the worst stretch necessarily to to make sense of things i mean uh, i like the nods that they're given to various elements and aspects of the city i love the hat that i think the hat's great you Liberty like the Bell script? looks i like that i'm okay i'm okay with it i i knew the first time i saw that that font i was like i i, I get what they're going for there so I, i'm cool with it it's it it's really just the gradients. We gotta stop with these like Photoshop gradients. Yeah. Like just give me solid colors. I know. Like dr- ditch the ditch the black pants, ditch the gradients, and just go solid colors. I don't think That's I like I the ask. font. I don't like it. I'm okay with it. I I don't hate I, the colors. I can vibe with it. I like the I like the hat logo. I don't like the font. I don't understand how that's symbolic of the crack in the yeah, liberty big, bell big Boy. fan of the hat all in all though another city connect in the books um i'm not quite sure who's up next but I, we have a few more teams left to go but ultimately it may not matter because i absolutely may not even have, love i i don't think the yankees are gonna do one and i love it i don't think they are they're it's like them they're, in oakland right people yeah, like trying to ask about this it, yeah it's like Reporters are like asking questions. They're, they're just like not commenting on them. And like Nike's trying to reach out to the Yankees, being like, "Hey, like, can we get something going?" They're just not responding. Sick. <laughs> I can get I can get behind that, but yeah, like I said, we I think we talked about it that the uh, schedule wise, the Yankees and the A's are the only ones that are not with a they they're without a date. A's for obvious reasons, but I think the I think you're right. I think Yankees are like, yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> we're and I gotta not. say, good for the Yankees, man. <laughs> we're good not for the doing Yankees. It. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, closing it's been the book a while here. since I've seen a good one. That's all. That's yeah. I don't mean to be a hater. Like I no, I understand. Just, I just yeah, I don't like the dark pants, and it's been a while since I've seen one. I I really there are a few that I really did like. I yeah. like the Marlins one. I like the Nationals one. I just I, most of these I just don't understand and it's like a it's like you said like tell it's, me that like you like the red them. Sox ones i don't i don't like them but i i that one connecting dots makes the most sense for me with yeah. the boston marathon like that and just like the tragedy that happened and like the patriots day thing all tying in like that yeah. makes a lot of sense. I don't personally would I like if I was a Red Sox fan, I don't think I would be into the the yellow, but that one connects dots more than any jersey. I'm so bought in yeah. on the yellow. I love it. But I just yeah, there's a there's only a few where I like I actually like the design and like I think it's cool and it looks good on on the field. Um I just dark no, pants and- aren't it. 
Yeah, like you're saying, don't want to sound like a hater. The, I, I'm cool with the concept. And I remember like years ago, you made the point of like, we play 162 of these things. It's okay to mix in yeah. like a fun jersey from time to time. Like baseball was so due for that. Yeah. We've got our alternates and all that, but we're, we were due for the next stage of what that is. And I think the intention was good. Um, it's a, it's a great idea. It's not just like another alternate, but it's like, okay, how can we connect the city? But it, I think our issue is that some of these just aren't, aren't good. Yeah. Like they're, they're very yeah. just lazy and yeah. last minute put together. It looks like, I don't know, but anyway, not to continue on and on about that. Um, but closing the book, as I was saying, just got a few items here to run through. Steven Strasburg officially, has announced his retirement. Uh, just a weird, I thought he already did. S- slightly sad ending to this whole story. Um, yeah. If you recall, the national, I think there was plans to uh, do some sort of uh, ceremony. I don't know if ceremony is the right like word, a one but day. a ceremonious exit, I mm-hmm. guess you could say. But things started. Um, started boiling up a little bit in terms of the financials of how his contract was going to play out. And it just, it got ugly real quick. Um, but the, I guess they've, they've got, yeah, I mean, I'd be I a little butt hurt if I was the nationals too. Yeah. But like, the yeah, whole, I mean, there's only so many things you can control, but yeah. And, and like we talked about when he, when the report initially came out, what, like last fall that said he was going to retire or whenever that was, the whole point was that that contract was just a a massive check to say thank you for for what he did for that right. World Series. It wasn't about what he was going to provide in future seasons. We knew that the Nationals knew that, but now they're pl- now it seems like they were playing dumb this whole off season. What did he? But anyway, pitch? It seemed- like it was like thirty nine innings or something like that after that contract. Yeah, something. I don't have the number, but it was it was very very minimal. Um, but uh, yeah, they finally ironed that out. It sounds like the Nationals. It sounds like his contract will be paid out in in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't sound like there has been any al- uh, alterations made to the numbers. So it sounds like he's going to get what he's owed. Um, they did, Nolan, I, I think the, there are life and like not life insurance policies, but there are insurance policies that teams take out on certain players and contracts, I believe. Right. I think that yeah. like, like they still owe him, but I, I would assume that they're probably going to get some money back. I don't know how that looks, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's possible. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the specifics of whether or not they did that. And if they did what that looks like for their return, uh, but all in all, a farewell to uh, Steven Strasburg. I'm glad to see it finally came to a yeah. close. Not his, not his career, but like just this whole issue because it, it was yeah. getting to be a little, little sad. I'm like, all right, like let's let's let this guy. He clearly hates the fact that he can't throw anymore. Yeah, and he even said that he's like in in his in his uh, retirement remarks. He was basically like, yeah, injuries do not allow me to throw at a major league level anymore. And that's, that's just sad. So I'm glad he was able to get out of here with like a little bit of dignity left. No, thanks to the nationals. Um, <laughs> Nolan, I can never say it. Is it Shanwell? I, th- I think I called him Nolan Chanul last episode and I heard on the angels broadcast today. And that was not right. I think it was Nolan Shanwell is what I heard. I've heard Shanuel. Like Shanuel, Shanuel. I th- yeah, I think that's what it is. I think you're right because I yeah. said Shanuel, and I'm like, that's not right either. That's not what I heard. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's Nolan Shanuel. His streak, his uh, on base streak, which I believe reached 36 games, was cut short. Actually, the Major League Weird. Baseball came out came out and announced that they were going to make a change to I believe the 30th game of the streak when they were when the Angels were in Baltimore and they had to reverse a call to an error. Uh it's just weird. a weird, weird story. That's weird. We go back a week. <laughs> you go back. Like 
checking through official scoring. Like, nah. I'm going to change that one to a boot. That's weird. I think it was the Angels broadcast. I I should have loaded the clip up, but they went in on it, apparently. They were like, you know, you've got a great story with the young kid with seemingly a bright future, and you're just a, a good story for him, and you're going to rip the rug out from underneath him like this, and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, this just seems very weird. To be fair. The Angels just seem like a bitter... Everything's bitter over there. Yeah, I mean... Oh, I've got thing- something I want to tell you about. Keep going, though. Keep going. I'm trying to remember. What was I talking about? Is it something that I can put a pin in so you can say what you got to say? The commentators. Broadcasters. Oh, real quick. I'll just finish my thought. Um, on the on the call that got reversed, just to be transparent here. Look. Oh, you watched people, the actual play? I didn't I did. see it. Yeah, I did. People said that it was blatantly a hit. And I'm gonna go ahead and disagree. I don't Ooh. think it was. I don't think it was as blatant of a hit as people are making it out to be. How can yeah, I search pull it up. this? What, what do me, you think's the best way see. to look I'm, it up? I'll I'll find it for you. But anyway, people are like, um, yeah, it was a it was clear as day. It was a hit. I'm like, no. If you go back and look at the <laughs> if you go back and look at the play, it's it's not. I I want you to I want you to chime in on this. You text it to me. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Um, it's like you as a major league player. It, it's a tough play for sure, without a doubt. But like you gotta you gotta make that play, and the fact that he didn't make the play led to him getting on base, obviously. But if he makes the catch, like if he as the pitcher, if you feel that if you receive that throw. From the first base, and you step on first, he's out. It wasn't going to be a bang. It, well, it was going to be a close play, but it wasn't necessarily going to be a bang bang play. Like if he if he receives it, steps on the bag, the out it, the the, the play's over. He's out. I don't know if you're going to agree, disagree, but I like I I can see the merit behind the decision. I think it's stupid. They went a week. They went back a week. I do I, I agree. I think that part sucks. Um... Which side note, as you're looking over that play, the scoring for Major League Baseball has gotten so incredibly garbage. Yeah. The la- I call it last year. Like routine plays are getting botched. And they're like, yeah, no, that's a single. That's base hit. Did they say Score it's one a, for the boys back home? It's, it's like a throwing error on Mount Castle. I think it was ruled as a throwing error. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who's yeah. credited to. But. I mean, like, technically, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, like, if he, I if would he say, receives the ball, steps on the bag, it's over. He's right, out. Right. Right. Yeah. It's tough. I think the diving play aspect to it makes things challenging. Because, like, you see that as, like, a shortstop. You make a diving play in the hole or something like that, and you get up and throw it. Even and if, you can like, tell when you watch like the clip. A, you know, like a dig, like a first baseman doesn't get the scoop sure, or whatever. Yeah. It's like, if it's bang, bang, it's hard to say. I'm really on the fence, to be honest. And if you're looking at the clip, Bauman on the mound, he like hesitates because he didn't think he was going to get, he didn't think Mountcastle was going to get to the ball, yeah. which I think only further. That probably made it worse. Yeah. Yeah. It led to the more bang, bang yeah. element of it, but. Oh no! Not sorry. Not to get way off track there with the yeah the nitpicky, but it, I at the end of the day, I think it's stupid. They went back a week and <sighs> made that change. But yeah. did you get to the thing you said you were going to get to? No. So um, just a quick note. I I think it's always cool to hear from like inside the perspective of a certain fan base. We have family friends that live in in California who go to Angels games often. Um, just a, it, the bitterness of it is crazy. Apparently, their hype video before game starts, Otani's still in the hype video. What? Yeah, like they they put it up on the big screen, like you know, like before first pitch kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Otani's still in it. 
and like apparently the whole crowd boos um like apparently the like nobody rocks otani stuff anymore um the the asian culture is like completely dissolved like there you barely see any type of asian culture at games anymore really strange but the fact that otani's still in the hype video is insane to me that's weird they had just that's gone to, i talked to them yesterday and they were just at the game on thursday it was the Sox that's series so it was the beginning weird, of the Sox series dude okay yeah oh my god that that organization that's bad, man. Dude. That's bad. what are we <laughs> yeah. doing that's pretty embarrassing Anthony Rendon, speaking of which, got his first hit. Well, I, <laughs> I, I use the word hit very loosely. Oh, boy. Lakes out an infield dribbler <laughs> for his first hit of the season. If that's not poetic, I don't know what I is. Know. Like, that's incredible. Just a mess. Yeah. I did see a tweet, though. I, I had completely forgot, but somebody had said, Red Sox love ending these hitless streaks because if you recall, Chris Davis yeah, I ended do remember his that. hitless streak yeah. at Fenway. I don't, I don't know what that's all about, but... Yeah. Socks just love these streaks, you know. Yeah. Um what did I have? Was that it on the on the on the angel stuff? Yeah, that was it. It's just I thought it was just funny to hear like from somebody who just gone to a game like, yeah, you know, Otani's still in the hype video. I'm like, bro, what are side you doing? Note, side note, we were sitting there, I was sitting there watching the 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 last game of the Angels Red Sox series today, and and Meredith was like, We need to get to a game out there. That'd be awesome. And I'm like, Yeah, you know what? That would be a yeah. I found out, which I had heard before, but had clearly forgotten. But I was reminded this weekend that 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 park is the fourth oldest in baseball. That's weird. Can you believe that? That's weird. It does look like a cool ballpark. I would love to catch a game there. Yeah. We have to make a trip out there. A little, yeah. little pod trip out there yeah. at some point. I like That'd it. Right. Got to hit. Do- I mean, might as well just hit Dodger Stadium in this. Oh. Same. I guess same trip. Might I don't think it's as done. close as you think. Uh, maybe we wait till after the Dodger renovations. So they're doing like big renovations soon. That'd be nice. I we'll probably still get stabbed, season. but at yeah. least we'll have nicer amenities around us right. when it happens. Right. Cause that's, what's important. At least we'll get to sit um, in sand colored seats. Yeah, the beach. We get to hang out at the stupid. beach. It's so stupid. Wild. Uh, Pirates open the season for the first uh, eight and two for the first time since 2018. Look, I I said what I said in the I hot takes it. and predictions episode. <laughs> Nobody wanted to get on board with me, but I said what I said, and I'm sickened by it. So I just want to have that on record that uh, the Pirates season <laughs> is starting. They're Ride that train as, well as, as long as you can, pal. I don't know how long it'll last, but you stay on that high horse for as long as you can. <laughs> you believe that I will. Uh, on the flip side, Marlins won their first game today after starting 0-9. With a rain delay involved in the ninth, wasn't it? I think I saw that. In that in that game? I yeah. thought that was the Cubbies game. <laughs> I thought it was theirs. I saw something on Twitter that was like they had a rain delay in the ninth and like baseball gods just can't let the Marlins get a win or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, I maybe they did. You're probably you're probably uh, right. They, they probably did. I didn't I catch know. that part, but that's that's hilarious. One and they're uh one Brutal. and nine to start the year. Brutal. Which, and they did you see they removed the skip Schumacher's option for next year or something like that. I did. Yeah. I saw that. Was that recently? Did that news break like recently? Because that, that I, saw, I saw the article, but I didn't know that they had made that announcement. Like just, was it the other day? I guess I don't, I didn't fully read that article, but I did see that because the article I read was that the Marlins will likely be searching for a new option at manager for 2025 or something. I'm didn't, like, that. didn't he just win manager of the year last year? Yes. And then it said the, the article clo- finished yes. by saying that Skip Schumacher and Alex Cora should Alex Cora hit manager free agency will be Swap. the two like hottest commodities. That's crazy. This is Mike Schilt all over again. Win That's- manager of the year, year later, you're gone. I don't get that. Stupid. Stupid. Um, Juan Soto, just a little note here. I know you and I talked about it a little bit before we hopped on, but uh, my my April, I mean, I could not have been more dead on with this. I said yeah. a dip was coming and people 
people in the in the comments are like, well, yeah, of course she's not going to maintain like a 700 batting average. I said that's not what I'm talking about. But you'll you it it'll, it'll be tangible. You'll be able to feel the dip. And sure enough, the last two series between the D-back series, which you were there for a game, yeah, and Toronto, he went one for sixteen. Yeah. So when I was talking about a dip. That's that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like he he plummets in April, but he'll, but what have I said though? I said he'll be back. You don't need to panic. As I'm Yankee chilling. fans, you you just need to know that this is part of his mo. Like this is just what he does. I personally am still in this weird phase of like it still feels surreal that he's wearing the Yankee uniform. I'm still in the honeymoon phase, so I'm chilling. He can go one for thirty. I don't care. <laughs> well, I'll be good. careful what you wish for. I know who he is. I know what he's going to do. Don't stress. Stay strong. May Soto is what you need to hold out yep. hope for. Yep. Just wait. Just uh, stand by. Uh, there's no there's no holding out hope, I think, for Alec Manoa. His <laughs> his his recent rehab start, uh, one and two-thirds innings. I think it was today, actually. One and two-thirds innings, five hits, six runs. Or no, six earned runs, seven runs, four walks, uh, and his ERA now has jumped ever so slightly to a rosy 32.4. Can you read off the first line again of what level he was pitching in? Uh, I believe it was single A. Is that what I read? Yeah. Yep. Not good. Yep. 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 Not good. I had uh, I told you I had a question I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Which collapse will go down as a worse collapse? Alec Manova or Matt Harvey? Because we're I there, think, I think. Alec Manoa and I cuz the have, mouth for, I think it's because of his mouth. Yeah, and I was I was literally just about to say you have to take the like take Take the numbers out of it. Take the the outcomes out of it. You just, for me at least, I'm not saying everybody else has to, but I'm going to look at this from the point of view of like who the players were. And Matt Harvey, I think we can all agree, was a guy that wanted to pitch until his arm fell off. And he literally, like he he, he literally did. He, he made it go at it with the O's there at the end. And you know, he just wanted to be out there and to be able to succeed, but it just, it just wasn't working. But for Alec Manoa, he just he just he ran his mouth too much. And you can only really do that if you can back it up. Because if you can't, then you just look like an idiot. And not only is does he look like an idiot, he's he's getting wrecked yeah. at the lowest levels of <laughs> <laughs> like minor league baseball. Facing what are like we 17 doing? year olds that just signed. I mean, what are we doing? It's embarrassing. These kids aren't even eligible for the draft and you're getting <laughs> wrecked. Oh, poor guy. Not like, poor spare guy. Me the rehab, spare me the rehab yeah, element. Guys, yeah. guys rehab all the time. Yeah. And stop. they don't they don't have ERAs of thirty north of thirty two. And stop Get calling it rehab. Here. Stop calling it rehab. That's this it's is not, not rehab. <laughs> this is no rehab is is first needing an injury for a rehab to happen this is just the ultimate this is yips this is yips on steroids and i'm here for it i'm eating it up he's he's eating it up too you this can is my favorite part that. of the movie so far hey Wow, well played. We're Thanks. we're milking that that line for <laughs> all sure for all are. it's worth we sure um are. All right. Well, we already got to the fanatics uh, conversation, so that about wraps it up for what I had in closing the book. I, I mentioned to you before we got on. My closing the book is getting longer and longer. Yeah, that's like, all right. It it used to be a quick segment at the end, but they're getting longer and longer. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But I I meant to say before we wrap things up here. Now that you're like sort of back at least for yeah. a little while and then you'll be back for good once you get back from the honeymoon yeah we need to we need to um start incorporating some uh segments for the year so just be thinking about that 
Um, once we got, got a little, little bit more routine, a little, little more yeah. rhythm going. Got a something, something cooked up. We'll have that on deck for everybody. It's been been a little tricky, obviously, with the combining the start of the season with the fact that Nate's been just super busy. Uh, but for for those of you listening, we obviously appreciate you guys tuning in. We're glad you're here with us. But once Nate gets back from his his honeymoon, we'll be I'll be nice uh, and tan, and then we roll. All systems go for the yeah. for the remainder of the year. So we've got that to look forward to. But unless you got anything else. Subscribe to the YouTube as always. We're moving right along, cranking out the content on there. So be sure to check that out. Yep. Uh, Next time you're over at grandma's house to fix the Wi Fi, go ahead and just subscribe on her computer for YouTube real quick. You'll never know. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank you guys. Really, honestly, thank you for um, some of you listeners who reached out and congratulated me. It means a lot. And, um, bear with me give me give me a month and uh and i'll be back to normal so love you guys don't go chasing curveballs love y'all and as always looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon until next time stay filthy